Why is it you get, um, I've seen you've been upset by, some Some journalists ask, uh, what about male circumcision? So why are they so different in your mind? Well, it's completely like foreskin is not clitoris. You have to kind of like the equivalent. But the, let me start off by saying, actually, I despise male circumcision. I actually think it's ridiculous. Um, it makes, it has no kind of, because um, we were talking, because someone was telling me, oh, it's cleanliness. I'm like, yeah, like, you know, 2000 years ago, okay, when there was no soap and water, but now we're living in the 21st century and it actually makes no sense. And it's not a, literally, it's not a religious requirement. It's just a preference for men, for their sons to look like them. Um, I had this really interesting conversation once with um, somebody saying, I said, oh, I saw of men that, um, men that are uncircumcised, they're better in bed. Like people get so angry, like circumcised men get so because you can never have a, a really um what's the word i'm looking for um balanced view about male circumcision with men if they've been circumcised because they just can't hear about anybody with a foreskin hang on hang on i've been men. i've been circumcised and i'm perfectly happy to me it's, it's, pro it's probable that that other men are, are better in bed no no i was gonna ask you, I, I was gonna ask you this comments because when you said that you're from a jewish family but secular i was, I was gonna say were you circumcised and and, and how do you feel about your sons being circumcised? How do you feel about your sons being circumcised? It's, it's something that, um, yeah, I think about that a lot. And you know what, you touched on something that which I, I'm, I'm a little bit undecided, but, but what's really interesting is that bit of one of the main reasons is because you want your son to look like you. And isn't it weird if your son doesn't look like you? And I thought that is the creepiest argument for something. Like the idea that you're walking around, yeah, my dad's willy is different to my willy. Like, who cares? I very rarely look at my dad's willy. But that's what I'm saying to you. That's what. That's how sometimes with the FGM, when 98% of women in the Somali community have been cut, imagine the fact that you not being cut is this whole kind of. But even, but the difference between male and female, um, like you know, FGM and male circumcision is it's the it's basically the drastic nature of the act and also the consequences of women's lives in, in terms of health and everything else, and then how the lived experience of women kind of change. So when FGM happens, other forms of like you know gender based violence happen when male circumcision happens men get the keys to the kingdom so they get like a pat on the back and um everything else but yeah i just literally it is that whole thing it's like i sit around with my jewish friends and i just can't deal with like their sons not looking like them i'm thinking that is just so weird man literally you're thinking about the non-existent foreskin of your children yeah i don't think i would it would be, obviously i'd have to consult the the other person involved in the making of said future baby the, the thing that male circumcision really pisses me off about is the fact that women will give up cheese eggs and all these things to do in pregnancy they will carry that baby to get immunized but for no reason other than the fact that four thousand years ago a man gave his foreskin to god apparently they would suck they would subject the most important organ I'm, I'm one of the most one of the most important organs of that child's healthy body to this horrific act that could actually like you know um result in not just like mental scarring but a physical scarring that could damage his ability to use that it's just, mm. honestly if you if you really think about it logically it's like it's weird yeah yeah it's it's i think it's obviously there it is very different as you've said to female genital mutilation because i don't feel i don't care it's just whatever you know it is what it is it's like, well that's why it's more ridiculous because with females um you know, mutilation with um, fgm it's barbaric it's wrong and also people do it in order to oppress women so at least you can see the power dynamics of this whole thing this I, but why I don't know why. <laughs> I couldn't tell you why. I think if we actually stop male circumcision, we might be able to stop FGM. Is it we mm. like? It's just like it just makes no sense. So, yeah. and loads of Americans get it when they're not even religious, don't they? Loads of Americans. Well, because again, it was it was Kellogg's that like you know the the Wakers that did it, and then all these men wanted their sons to look like them. So when the first generation of huh. like you know of these guys that I think it was like, it was like seventy, it was like, I think it was like seventy percent of like. Um, and actually, I think, I think most, I think most black men are also circumcised. Yes, yes. The, 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 <laughs> sorry, I just said yes as if I was just imagining in my mind's eye all the black men I know and their penises. But I do have a recollection. <laughs> I didn't mean to admit to that, but I think back at like obviously primary school, we all used to shower together. Yeah. And that was something that I'm now I'm now remembering that I was familiar with, and of course Muslim boys as well.
Yeah, but also but Caribbean boys, which is actually quite. Because I've never actually. Said, I've never, I said to somebody the day. She said there was somebody in. Um, it was London as well. She said, "Oh, I've never seen." I said, "She's, she's an English girl." Um, I've never had sex with a man with with, with a foreskin. And I said, "Look at her." I said, are you, are "You you just dating Jews and Americans?" She's like, "Yeah, and Caribbeans." And I was like, "What? Like, imagine being a girl from East London that's never actually slept with a guy with foreskin. It's just bizarre." That is bizarre. <laughs> so yeah, I don't really get like I just. I find it more fascinating to talk about because he actually does talk about the social psych, like the, like the psychology of the whole um, kind of thing. Well, people are tribal, aren't they? And that's where that thing of you need to look like the other person. You know, if it's important yeah. for someone who's a football fan to wear the same colours as the other people in the football team, it's more important that for those people that your genitals look like the genitals of your tribe or your clan or whatever it is. Which is bizarre, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. If I ever did do it, I think if I had a child, I'd have a proper look into it and I'd sit down with a doctor or something. And, and I probably wouldn't do it. Doctor's going to say to you, it's unnecessary. So the idea, and there's a really good campaign in America that's called I Did Not Consent, which is basically men holding up pictures of themselves um, before they're brisk. Oh, is that what it is? Is that called brisk? The ceremony when you're seven or eight days yeah. old, I think it is. Yeah. Because again, even then, it's like you're being kind of like sacrificed. You'd be like on this white pillow, and I, I, I said to a, um, a rabbi friend of mine, I said, I said, and also, why are you like, you know, why are you putting your lips on the baby penis? And he's like, we're not putting my lips. And I'm like, he's like, he's like, we don't even do that anymore. We use a straw. I'm like, do you know how weird that is? You put a straw Sorry, on a baby. Is that what happens? Because I, I thought I, I was going to mention that before, and I thought that's no, that must be a myth. Is that actually is that orthodox or is that everyone? I know. I think it's orthodox. I don't think it's everyone. I think it's like it's like it's like. Well, but I just, but I just still said to him like, but he was like, he was like a proper Jewish um, guy. And he was, I know. And I just was like, and he's a friend. So I just, I'm just, I'm like, I'm not winding you up, babe. But you know, that's just like weird. Like it's just like, like you're putting like a straw with the port on your baby's penis. It's just like if, stop oh, it. If I if I ever did decide to, you know, and I from what you're saying, I would speak to a doctor, and they would say don't do it. But in the in the hypothetical situation where I did do it. I would not have a rabbi go or any religious man who's not a doctor going anywhere near it. But then can you actually imagine like the world? So what you're doing is you're basically speaking, like you're taking the autonomy away from your child. Hmm. Well, you have to take autonomy away from your children to a certain extent. I am agreeing with you, but I mean... You... But not to mutilate them. Well, no. Well, that's the difference, isn't it?